Hello and welcome to the next video in this series. In this video, we're going to create a login form and the login functionality on the user class. So let's get started. The first thing we want to do is add a form to the homepage to allow the user to log in. So let's go to home.html and let's just copy this whole card, which is the sign up form card, and paste it down here. And now we can just edit this. We'll change this to log in. Instead of sign up form, this will be log in form. We don't need the name field, so we'll delete that. We just need the email field, the password field. We want to be able to handle errors, so we'll leave that there. And then we have the submit button, which will change the text on it to log in. So let's take a look at this. Perfect. Now let's edit the JavaScript that handles this form submission. So we'll go to scripts.js. And again, we can copy all of the sign up form functionality and paste it down here. So when the login form is submitted, we want to go to the user login route, which we're going to create in a moment. The type can be post. The data will be the form in serialized format. So that's fine. And once they've logged in, we want to go to the dashboard just like after sign up. So that's good. And the error handling is all good. So let's just save that. And now let's go to models pie and create a new class method on the user class for logging in. So right now we have start session, sign up and sign out. So let's create a new method down here called login. So the first thing we want to do is query the database for a user with a matching email address. So let's create a user variable and set it to db.users.find1. So we want to find a user with the email address that was submitted by the form. So request.form.get email. And then we want to say if we found the user, start a new session and return that to the front end. So return our start session method, which will be self dot start session. And then we'll pass in the user object. If we were not able to find a user, let's return an error. We'll say invalid credentials, login credentials. And we'll say this error is a 401 status code, which is unauthorized. So let's test this out. Make sure to refresh the page, and then we'll try to log in here. All right, we got a 404 error. So it was not able to find user slash login. And that is because we did not create a route for this login method yet. We just created the class method. So let's go to routes.py and create a new route. So this will be called app.route, and then it'll be user login. And then we want to return the user class instance and then the login method. So let's save that and try again. Method not allowed. All right, so we need to allow posting to this method or to this route. So we'll say methods include post. And there we go. We've successfully logged in as this email address. Let's look at our database and try a different user. Let's try test10.com. So we'll sign out and try to sign in again. All right, there we go. So this works, but all we're doing in the login check is seeing if we can find a user with that email address. What we want to do is make sure that the password they submitted matches the password in the database. So let's add a little logic here. So we're going to use passlib to verify that the submitted password matches the encrypted password in the database. 
So here we're querying and getting the user. So we have their password in this user object. So we can use passlib here to verify the submitted password, which is request.form.getPassword against the user's password, which we just got from the database, which is user password. This is unencrypted and this is encrypted. And this method verif or this function verify will compare the two and see if they match. So let's save that and test it out. We'll sign out again and we'll try to log in. I'm just going to type in a bad password. Nope, invalid login credentials. We get an error 401 unauthorized. Let's put in the correct password. And there we go, we are logged in. So that is a basic user login system using a Python, Flask, and MongoDB. That's it for this tutorial series. Thanks for watching.